Hello, I'm Michael Rickards, the Executive Director of the Hall Institute of Public Policy. And today on our Hall Institute Public Forum, we're having part one of what we call Hometown Solutions, a look at some of the exciting things that are happening in the state of New Jersey and its municipalities. I'm delighted today to have as our first guest a, a good friend of ours, uh, Dr. Larry McCulloch. He is the Grants Officer in Woodbridge Township, and he's also the press director for the whole Institute of Public Affairs here. He has a PhD in, um, in, from University of Pittsburgh in ethnomusicology, and he did a dissertation on Irish music. That's, how did that go? How did the dissertation go? Well, it was good. It was, <laughs> it was uh, what they call an ethnomusicological study of Irish music in Chicago. And ethnomusicology basically is, is musicology, but with an anthropological twist. You're basically not only looking at the music that people play, but you're looking at why they play it, who plays it, who listens, the whole culture of that music and what it means. And it's, Now, it's you are a musician, a composer, the author of plays, of fiction, nonfiction. You've written a couple of essays when I first got to know you. Uh, you've done film scripts. You're married to an actress. Where do you get all the time to do this uh, sort of thing? You must be a, it's like dealing with, uh, with Michelangelo here. Um, just, it's just 24 hours in a day and you just only get so many days in your you know, natural span and you just gotta make the most of it. Well, I'm interested really in what you're doing now in terms of developing the art scene in Woodbridge and the impact that arts has not on just the life of the mind, mm -hmm. but also on local economics. Mm -hmm. Could you give us a, an idea, really, of what's behind your proposal, how it's working? Well, uh, Mayor John E. McCormick has been the mayor of Woodbridge since late 2006. And uh, one of his very first uh, initiatives, really the foundation of, of a lot of his programs, w was economic revitalization. Uh, Woodbridge has been fortunate in that it hasn't had really terrible economic uh, misfortunes. But on the other hand, you just can't keep as a status quo. You, it's nice to be stabilized, but you always have to have an eye to the future. And Mayor McCormick's idea is that, um, so many other municipalities have, have discovered, is that the arts are an activity that draws all kinds of people from outside your community and people in the community to get out and, and start doing things, uh, doing things that involve spending money and, and um, uh, you know, just creating activity that, that sort of goes beyond its original scope. So uh, using economic revitalization as a tool, the first place you go to is the artist. So in early 2007, Mayor McCormick just put out a call to all the local artists in, in Woodbridge. And, and it's funny, artists are always in your town, they're everywhere, but uh, they don't always pop their heads up. They have to kind of you know, be invited because they're always off doing their own work, either, either quietly and privately or, or some other part of the world. So Mayor McCormick got uh, you know, maybe about 40 Woodbridge artists in a room and just said, what do you want? What do we need to, to make Woodbridge a more arts-filled place? And these artists, many of whom had never met each other before because they're all kind of isolated, um, they started coming up with projects, <clears throat> um, a concert series, a youth theater, uh, a historic ghost walk, because um, Woodbridge was chartered in 1669, so we got almost 400 years of history. Uh, all these things, that, these ideas people had had but thought, eh, nobody else will be interested in them. Finally, they met kindred souls. And um, by having sort of the imprimatur of the, uh, the mayor's office, it showed that the township really cared, thought it was interesting, and really wanted to go about kind of guiding uh, these efforts. And in the last four years, uh, in, all kinds of arts have popped up. People have just seen those people doing these things and said, I can do it too. Um, we just held an arts committee meeting last night, actually, and we have even uh, another theater group that's popped up that does educational theater. And um, in terms of economic revitalization, uh, we've seen people come in to the town. Uh, they come into the event. Um, they spend money in restaurants. Uh, you know, they, they go around to the stores. Uh, it really does work, and, and we're just really at the, the, the basic foundation level of, of doing that, and we've got lots more plans in the future. Now, unlike uh, Red Bank, uh, Woodbridge doesn't really have a reputation nope. of being an art center. Uh, Red nope. Bank, of course, does, and nope. it's uh, certainly helped by the Count Basie Theater nope. there, after the Count Basie who, who lived there. Nope. Um, what, what, in terms of Woodbridge, what, decide, what, what uh, made you decide that that was an area you wanted to explore, the arts. Yeah. Well, literally, Michael, there have been thousands of studies published. Uh, I mean, just Google 
economic arts impact, uh, and you will just literally come up with thousands of sites um, that just show the, 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 the enormous um, economic power of the arts and the community. Uh, but then the question is, how do you go about doing it? And you're, you're right, Red Bank uh, has institutions. They have these great destinations that people go to. Um, and they've known about them. Um, Woodbridge has none of those. We don't even have a university. We have um, Berkeley College, a, a branch. Right. Um, our community college uh, actually is in Edison, Middlesex County. Um, so, but what we, we do have the Barron Arts Center, which is sort of our community arts center. Um, but what we really have, again, is these artists. And we have uh, all these, these other facilities. So what, what the mayor did is he, uh, after getting the artists together, he commissioned an art survey which uh, the Rutgers um, uh, Blaustein School did for us, and basically just kind of took an inventory of all the arts and the artists, along with goals and how we could kind of help grow this art scene. And um, again, that kind of got people motivated a little bit. And the idea with what Woodbridge is trying to do now, <coughs> excuse me, is um, it's about arts education. And a lot of people think arts education is just some drawing class in a school or something. Uh, but it goes far beyond that. Um, so there, what we're really trying to do is besides have these regular traditional art forms, you know, concerts, dances, uh, theater uh, activities, we're going to start having arts education activities in new media. So when you come to Woodbridge, you're not really going to come to, a, to see a big concert with 15 other people. You're probably going to come, your arts experience is going to be to learn something that's really interesting and amazing about art and then how you can apply that and make your own art. So we're really kind of, instead of starting up here with a big thing, we're kind of starting here with a lot of little things that we think are going to build. Because that's really when you talk about uh, economic revitalization and the arts, um, what we don't want is a lot of empty buildings. That, you know, we got a big concert hall and then it's like doing all this effort to get people there, then they leave. If you can get the arts activities sort of be in your community all the time and draw other people in, then you've really got a bonus situation. So that's, that's the mayor's plan. I started two different um, centers for the arts at different colleges I was at and had exactly the consequence that you've said. Uh, it's tremendous. Uh, what it, it's a, it's a, a form of maturation, I think, of a community that as it gets older, it gets more affluent. And people want uh, some of the amenities they associate with big cities. And I noticed when I was doing that that some places Old mill towns in Massachusetts had taken some of these buildings and turned them into centers for the sculptors. It's very tough for sculptors to get the type of space they need because to some extent the buildings aren't built to handle a sculpture. It's so heavy. Yeah. Unless it's on the first floor, a lot of people can't do it. But with factory buildings, of course, they are meant to handle yeah. Yeah. very, very heavy sorts of equipment. Yeah, a lot of room. And, yeah, did you have that situation occur in Woodbridge, a, a special sculpture uh, uh, well, building? We, we do have a, a couple sculptors, and uh, uh, they actually basically are working in their, 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 their own garages right now. But what the mayor has planned is uh, uh, something called Avenel Arts Village. And uh, well, another thing about Woodbridge, many people know it as the crossroads of New Jersey because the right. Turnpike and Garden State and 440 and 287 are all there. Uh, we're also on two train lines. Uh, or right. We have three train stops. We have Metro Park, Downtown Woodbridge, and Avenel. And right next to the Avenel train stop, literally just a few feet away, is the former General Dynamics plant. They made submarine parts during World War II. And it's 27 acres. It's been vacant for about, about 30 years. Um, that's now going to be redeveloped into an arts village, which is going to be mixed-use residential, uh, inexpensive, uh, affordable townhomes, uh, and uh, retail. And arts business and arts activity is going to be the centerpiece of that. So all those pieces are kind of being connected now. Uh, and the idea is that, uh, you know, if, if you build it, people will come if they know it's there and if there's something that they're really interested in. So and that they can participate in. So that's what we're finding out exactly. So one would be able to live there, mm -hmm. work, say, in New York, mm -hmm. but also you'd be living side by side with, with uh, functioning artists. Mm -hmm. Yep. And to see what they're doing. Yep. It's sort of like Florence in the 16th century. Yeah, because, uh, like I say, in your very kind introduction about all the arts things I've done, um, I've done a lot of arts because I've seen a lot of people do them. And I guess my temperament is, gosh, maybe I can do that too. And I think a lot of people feel that. Um, so, but you only get that if you actually see those arts being done. I was fortunate in my early life to, to see a lot of people doing arts and, 
Uh, but other people aren't. They're isolated or they, they think it's not for them. But this kind of setup with an arts village, that's going to be part of your everyday life. And again, the community around, um, Avenel is a, is a really nice area. It's a nice middle class area. Um, has a lot of uh, you know, functioning stores and uh, good residences there now. We're thinking the people in that section of the community will, it'll be like their new Main Street. Now, uh, 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 Woodbridge is five communities? Ten, actually. Ten? Yeah. Okay. Ten towns, Ten one community. Ten towns under one, uh, under yeah. one legal yeah. jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. So you're a model for what people are trying to do, which is yeah. combine <laughs> these tiny towns, villages, hamlets, and boroughs in yeah. Jersey into larger cities. Yeah, shared services have worked really well for us. We've got a lot of programs with the county and your and mayor, by the way, has been a good friend of the of the whole institute yeah. and this forum for yeah. years. He's just a wonderful uh, guy. We've had him on before. Uh, how did you get interested in the arts? Well, like I Where say, are you from originally? <laughs> I, was, I was born in Speedway, Indiana. Speedway, Indiana. Um, yep. I think I know where that is. Believe it or not. Yes, uh, the home <laughs> of the greatest spectacle in automobile racing. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then I grew up in the west side of Indianapolis, um, and uh, I was just always drawn to, uh, to artistic activity. So yeah. for the first 10, 15 years of your mm -hmm. life, you thought the arts was what, the Indianapolis 500? Pretty, and drag racing. And yeah, drag they, racing. they have the NHRI finals yeah. in, in Claremont. Um, How did you jump from that to uh, Yates? I'm, I'm curious. Well, um, I, I, uh, my, my mother's family actually, she was born in Brooklyn and raised in Philadelphia, so that whole side of the family is back east where you have lots of culture. And um, uh, the culture in the Midwest is kind of under the radar, but it's, it's coming up. So we would make uh, trips uh, to the East and I would see, you know, that there was a broader world outside the cornfields. And um, my parents gave me piano lessons when I was eight. And then I fell under the spell of bossa nova, uh, saxophone, uh, when I was about 11 and begged my father for a saxophone, which uh, he got, we rented it for $25 a week at the corner music store when he still had corner music stores to make sure that I was really, really interested. And then it went from there. And, and once you get into an arts activity, you meet other artists, no matter what your field is. And, and you just become, a, a, it just becomes a community of itself. Um, and um, like I say, when you try and do that on an organized level, uh, I think the community is the basis. If, if kids how, can just how, get into a thing. How did you go from the bossa nova to uh, Irish music. <laughs> well, I, uh, I actually had started reading Yeats and Joyce and Samuel Beckett as a teenager. Um, and then uh, I went to school in Ireland uh, when I was 19 as a sophomore. And for the first time I heard real Irish music. I mean, uh, I guess what we think of as now the chieftains playing groups like that. Um, and I'd never really heard that before because at the time it was pretty underground. Um, and then I started playing that on the flute and the tin whistle and came back to the United States and discovered there was a whole community of Irish musicians hidden away in places like Chicago and New York and Philly and, and Detroit and um, Boston and just uh, started affiliating with them. What about Irish dancers? Where are they hidden? Well, these days they are everywhere. Yeah. And I think the largest group of Irish dancers, uh, you, you may think this is strange, but it isn't, are in Japan. In Japan. In Japan. Irish music and dance are worldwide. There's something about those melodies, something about those dances that have attracted people everywhere. And they're literally, I, I, someone told me this the other day, that the, the, the largest number of dance schools at this point are in Japan. Isn't that interesting? But there are, I mean, in, in North Jersey, in uh, Central Jersey, where we are here, there's probably about 10 Irish dance schools. There used to be a lot when I lived in Massachusetts. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. From Boston down to... Um, Fall, Fall River. Yeah, it's an example of an ethnic uh, art form that has really transcended the, the ethnic group that produced it. What, did, what is your finding and when you went through Irish music? What did you end up uh, discovering to add to the knowledge that we didn't know? Um, I, I think that the main thing is that it uh, really does reflect the history and the culture of its, of its time and that that also was changing. I was just actually, a, a, I gave a presentation at the uh, Irish Books Art and Music Conference in Chicago and they had people from around the world um, discussing really how Irish culture is changing and um, that was the main thing that I think really was the theme of it is that uh, that's the only way a culture stays alive. You know, you can have people and you spread them different places and they'll carry that culture with them but it can't be a museum piece. They have to preserve enough of it so it's still identifiable as, as something Irish, but then it, ultimately it will blend with what the rest of the society is, is bringing to it. Now there's an Irish rep theater mm -hmm. in New York City. Yeah. And I went there, they were doing um, a celebration of Yeats. Uh -huh. 
and they did four, which I'd never seen before, four really short plays by Yeats, not the great plays mm -hmm. that we know, but four really short plays. And they got me on the mailing list, mm -hmm. and so I get constant stream of things they're doing. They're very active, and oh, yeah. I think they purchased that building that they were in. Yeah. Uh, have you ever gone there? Have yeah, that's the uh, Rep Theater on West 22nd Street. Yeah, Charlotte Moore is the artistic right, director. Right. Uh, yeah, a lot of great activity, and um, it's really a source, again, for bringing people together. Now, you and your wife are involved in the arts. Tell me a little bit about your wife was an actress? Uh, she was a professional actress, a graduate of the uh, Carnegie Mellon uh, Dramatic Conservatory, and then got her master's at University of Pittsburgh, and then went to New York, as, as young actors do, and uh, was there for about 30 years. And um, uh, what we, we actually have an educational film um, uh, theater company. It's called Pages of History. And what we do is we, we create um, plays, you know, about, about things going on in society uh, and uh, we encourage other actors and, and writers as well and then we basically try and get people to bring us out and present them so that's that's kind of what Are we they do. basically historical one-man plays? Uh, no we've got one um, actually we're, we're a brief commercial it's called First Mothers and uh, that's a play uh, that I wrote it's about the mothers of the presidents of the United States Oh really? Um, who everybody knows about the first ladies but the real defining factor is and what made that president and their character was their That's mother. Right. So we, we have monologues by 14 uh, women and oh. they're, they're real time. It's like five minutes in their life, some incredible turn point moment where you see really how, who they were, how that character got transferred to the, the child. And that uses four actresses. So we're doing a couple of those around President's Day. So are great presidents really mm -hmm. mama's boys? Well, in, in the early instances, the fathers usually died pretty early um, uh, uh, for various reasons. And, and the mothers were always uh, interested in education. Very tough people. They, they, for them to stay alive, they had to really, um, you know, stick with it. And they also had, had a real element of faith. Um, they really, um, I mean, not necessarily that they were religious fanatics or anything, but they really saw the world as you have a purpose. You know, there's a divine purpose in you. Young Abraham, so they, or young Franklin, so or special. that's your, yeah. Yeah, the special is the idea that you're a special person. Mm -hmm. And you've got a destiny and to you've fulfill. You've got a destiny, yeah. and the destiny uh, becomes very much, like you mentioned Franklin, I mean, even Franklin Roosevelt's yeah. mother, oh, yeah. who was with him, I think, throughout his first term. <laughs> she, she wouldn't go away, yeah. She wouldn't go away. Yeah, but she was a very and, formative and influence. I, um, Jackson's mother, mm. who was the one who said to him, um, Never call the law in, settle your own disputes, Andy, and then she died. Yeah. <laughs> he became a great duelist. Yeah. And Lincoln, of course, yeah. Lincoln's foster mother, he's mm -hmm. supposed to have said, all that I am I owe to my dear mother. She couldn't read, but she spent the read. butter and egg money to trade for books and, that he um, read. Washington, of course, and his mother, they hated each other, which is a little bit peculiar. <laughs> Um, and Eisenhower's mother, who was yeah. very religious, mm -hmm. and of course Nixon's mother, who was the tremendous formative influence. I once talked mm -hmm. to John Ehrlichman and asked him why Nixon took such an interest in protecting the Native American, the Indian tribes, mm -hmm. and because that's not exactly a cause mm -hmm. that you'd link up with Richard mm -hmm. Nixon. He said because his mother said to him, Richard, if you're ever in a position, make sure that you undo some of the bad things done toward the Indians. Yeah. And so Nixon became a big uh, supporter of uh, Native Americans. Yeah, all, all these mothers, first mothers, really imbued their sons with the idea of service. I mean, I don't think very few of them thought they'd become president, but uh, so that's what that play's about. And so we're doing um, that, and uh, we're like I said, we're open uh, to any, any plays that really talk about social and, and educational issues. That's fascinating. Now, uh, if people wanted to be interested in that play or any of the other educational films that you're doing, how would they get in touch with you? Uh, just go to www.pagesofhistory.org and um, that'll do it. And you'll find our contact email and phone information there. That's wonderful. Yeah, it must it, be exciting for your wife to be married to you. <laughs> I will remind her of that when I come home tonight. <laughs> and then as far as the Avenel Arts Village and the Arts Things in Woodbridge, um, just go to the Township uh, website, uh, Woodbridge, New Jersey, because Wonderful. things are popping up all the time. Larry, thank you very much. We're so pleased and honored to have you here today. I yes. hope people do follow up 
And I hope that we'll be able to follow up what is going to become a series that we're doing called Hometown Solutions. Thank you very much. Thank you.